congratulations after over 10 years of the making the success and film festival thank you very much i appreciate it it has been a long time <laughs> <laughs> so how does it feel to be at this point now because i mean the process your name's all over this project you know including editor director writer um what has how has this like symbolized in your career? Because it's also is, I believe, your feature film. Yeah, it is. It is my first feature and it's, you know, uh, like a third of my life. So it's definitely like something that, uh, you know, feels good to finally have out. And, you know, I, I could say when I started it, I didn't intend to edit and do a lot of other things that I had to do on the movie. But, you know, with independent filmmaking over the, over time, you know, eventually you just kind of have to do what it takes to get the job done. And sometimes that's uh, you doing it yourself. So I actually learned, I edited, I used to do music videos back in the day and in the early 2000s and stuff. And so I, I did edit a little bit, but I actually really went through the mud on editing this because it was years of editing so much footage. So so I, I think I kind of got my editing film school on this movie. How did you get all this footage? How did you put it together? I mean, there were some that said like our local news, I'm in LA. So when I saw that, I was like, it makes you like really question it. I mean, that was the intention. I mean, I kind of realized, so for instance, KTLA, like uh, for me, I I, I watched the local news. I'll, I'll admit it. I, I actually like the local news and uh KTLA is probably like our most local, local news, in my opinion. So, and my office used to be on the same lot as KTLA too. So it was just kind of a connection we had there. But uh, KTLA also has Rick Chambers and Rick Chambers does a whole lot of feature films. He does a whole lot of big, big budget movies and stuff. So he's fairly recognizable. So the idea was everybody in LA will make it, it'll feel real to them. But maybe if I use Rick Chambers as well, that people maybe across the country might recognize him or feel like they recognize him. Um, but the news, you know, the KTLA stuff was, it, it just, it's just compiling over the years. I mean, there's 30 different cameras that have been used on this. So much different technology uh, went into this film. Uh, you know, as you know, every two years, you know, technology just jumps drastically, right? You know, our phones are just so much better than they were just in 2009 when they first started coming out. So I would say, it's just years and years of compiling. I mean, all this footage in here from drone shots to security footage to news footage to everything, we just spent a lot of time compiling over time. And throwing all that stuff under the 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 kind of real news KTLA thing was was the goal to make it kind of feel more real. Because the one thing I do have an issue with is even huge blockbusters, $100 million movies, you'll see it. The news sometimes just feels very, very fake, right? So if they get like Wolf Blitzer and CNN, you're like, oh, that feels very real because you're used to seeing people like that on CNN. So the goal was just trying to, even though this is an independent film, try to make it feel as real as possible with just the compilation of footage we have from, you know, uh, uh, you know, search and rescue teams to whatever we could and going out to Malibu and stuff like that. So it, it was a lengthy process that I would say that footage was compiled over an eight, eight to nine year period. What was the length of actual filming? So we started in 2010. We started filming the first version in 2010. That version was called Malevolent. And that was the four original kids, the four boys that go missing. And those four boys, um, I had them they were fresh, like brand new faces in the business. They This is probably one of their first auditions they probably went on because we were looking for like an open casting call, unknown search. We wanted to find some unknowns. And so there was some chemistry test. They had to be right because they're all kind of based off of friends in my life. So they all kind of had to fit that mold. So we actually hung out for like two or three years and just filmed and filmed and filmed and filmed. And I have, I, I mean, I have, thousands of hours of footage of those four kids that just you know it only made it to 35 45 minutes in the film but so with them it was a very long process uh guys like tommy and hector in particular uh that play uh jake and carlos in the film they had to really go out of their way for me over more of like a 10 to 11 year process to to really uh come through for me on some reshoots and then the the four cast members that are the paranormal investigators plus our creature actors they 
they I had to work with again twice and probably over a four to six year period. So uh, uh, shout out to all these actors who are very dedicated and, and, and supported me and helped me out and, and, you know, came through when I needed them. So I, I appreciate that. He also integrated a little bit of what was or is history or hypothetical, the Western gate. Yeah. I mean, there's, 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 there's definitely some history in there. There's definitely, you know, a, 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 some, some stuff that America did, but uh, uh, yeah, there, it's, it's, it's like, I took like 20 different stories, either firsthand or historic, some books, some internet stuff, some weird horror movie stuff and kind of combined it to try to make the most interesting story. But there is still a root, there still is a root story there uh, uh, of, of, of maybe writing a wrong or something like that. But yeah, it, it does have a lot of, um, it's kind of like a, a mixture of just folklore, fairy tale, and some history. Yeah. Because I think all folklore and stuff comes from something historical or something that actually happened. So when you say some history, you mean some of the history you covered is true about Malibu Mountain? The Dawes Act. So the Dawes Act is definitely the the the, the real thing. So Malibu and Santa Barbara um, for the Dawes Act, the historical part of that is that uh, they did get their land just straight up stolen from them and, and like cheated out. Like white settlers basically showed up and essentially just kind of made promises of jobs and all kinds of things and basically pushed pushed everybody off the land and um, kind of tricked them. And so that is, there is, yeah, there is a big historical, I mean, that's our whole country in general. You know what I mean? That's, that's, a, that's what America's, you know, basically uh, went through, but yeah, there is uh there is that pack. So it's like, if you go up to Malibu or Santa Barbara in particular, there are uh, these little centers. Uh, I don't know exactly what you would call them. They're like state parks or centers. And they have like the history on the walls and stuff. And, you know, it's, I don't think it's anything that Malibu would be proud of. I don't think it's anything that America is proud of or, or white people in general, but, you know, to me, it's like, I, I, I definitely uh, was very interested in, in, in knowing about that kind of stuff and learning about that and trying to come up with some kind of, uh, I guess, reason, uh, historical reason to a degree, but it's still a horror movie. In, in, in the grand scheme of things, if you if you want to get really get technical, it's just still just a horror movie. There's a lot of information that you 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 put together in this film. So, how was the writing process for you? Did you have to? <laughs> did you have like this board for a long while, or you would just to keep track of everything? Because that was a lot of information. Yeah. Um, it was more, I mean, I wish I would have had a board. That would have been nice because it could have been a lot more organized. I would say it was more chaotic because it was based on footage. So what happens is if you shoot, say if you shoot a, a one version of a film and you say a film is 90 minutes long and you shoot, shoot a 90 minute film and you go, okay, we can't waste all 90 minutes. We spent money and we spent a lot of time on that. And there's some good stuff in here. You pull out, say 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there that's already kind of baked into the story. So you kind of, you're kind of handcuffed. You can't make just like a new story. You kind of have to say, okay, I've shot this. This is in the movie. So board wise. Yeah. That would be one of those index cards that says, Hey, this is here. And this is here. It really is more like a documentary where someone would go out, shoot for years and years, bring you a huge hard drive full of footage. And you just have to go digging through it and start to put stuff together. So I would say there's four scripted elements, like four scripted pieces. And those pieces had to kind of come together in the editing room. So it was kind of, I would compare it more to a documentary. I've done a documentary and it was very, very, very difficult. And it it feels like this stuff more comes together in the editorial process, but script wise, not traditional. Like I, the movie I just finished, uh, I, I wrote that script in about three to four months, shot it in, in a six month period. And when now we're, we're editing the film, that's a traditional you know, the story was all there. Everybody had exactly that. Everybody said exactly the lines. This was a lot of uh, improvising. And, um, you know, those four original kids, I, the one thing I can really give them credit for, uh, even though they might have cussed too many times, uh, they, they improvised mostly all of their stuff. Like, I wanted their, like, true selves to come out. And so, um, you know, 
that that part in general was just a blueprint. And even even the newer kids, you know, we just had more of a blueprint. But it is a script. I did actually at the end of everything assemble it all together and go, oh, okay. So we we actually had all the pieces just difficult to put together. And then once you do it in the editing room, you kind of do what we call a transcript. You have to go back to your script and say, okay, we put this piece here instead of there. So that's where that 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 board would have really come into to play. So how did you maneuver when it came to shooting the films on in Kate? So that was um I would say that was um the most difficult part. We spent most of the newer shoots from 2016 through 2019 in caves, entirely in caves. Basically everything we shot prior to 2016 was outside of a cave. Everything from 2016 on was was caves. And so we use two caves. One cave is out there near Six Flags in Valencia uh, at a ranch in Santa Clarita called Blue Cloud. That cave was built for a TV show called Weeds. We built onto it to kind of make it wind a little bit more and um, try to replicate this painted cave that's in Santa Barbara, this like famous cave up in the, in the mountains in Santa Barbara. And then the other cave, the larger cave system we used is the uh, OG... Uh, Adam West Batman cave right below the Hollywood sign in Bronson Park, Bronson Canyon Park in Hollywood. So that that cave was a little bit easier to maneuver through, but both of them, I would say you get very, very claustrophobic. And this was pre-COVID. So we were all wearing masks because of all the dust that get, gets kicked up. So, you know, when you got home at the end of the day, you just had a, a, a tremendous amount of dust. So it was very difficult I won't lie. I had a couple like panic attacks, just being like, I'm not claustrophobic at all, but when you're in a cave for 12 to 16 hours a day, every day for like three weeks straight, like you can start to, it can start to mess with your mind a little bit. So I will say that there was a couple of times I had to like step out and just like take fresh air because it did kind of cause like a anxiety or a panic, you know? So caves were difficult. Not going to lie. Wow. Well, thank you for your time for those of us that are from LA. Then with this information, now when they watch the film, they'll be like taking notes and like, oh, that's where it was. Yeah, the whole thing shot in L.A., Malibu and Los Angeles for sure. Yeah, we didn't we didn't go out, out, out of the range at all. So and you fooled me. I Googled what four kids went missing at one point. <laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, early on, just to let you know, early on in Malibu, um, we made about. 100 or 200 of those missing posters and we put them all over Malibu just for like two hours and like within like 20 minutes we knew we had caused like a panic so we had to go like rip them all down but we were just filming them so in the film you'll see some random people just staring at and it's just the back of them so you can't see who they are but those are real people like thinking that kids went missing and and there's actually Facebook pages of these kids real Facebook pages of these kids that ended in 2012 you can still dig those up um, so we tried everything we could at, at, at that point in time, but that, that's, that's awesome to know that you looked that up. That's great. That means we did our job. Yes. I was fooled. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, where are these missing kids? Why can't I find it? <laughs> like, Wait a minute. Something, that's I'm great. Missing something that's here. great. That's great. Well, thank you again for your time and congratulations. Thank you, Nancy. I appreciate it. You have a nice day. Thank you for having me.